Hey there. We are here this afternoon to paint a really cute, colorful seascape. Now, you've probably seen me paint lots of seascapes before in traditional colors, but um, today I thought we'd have some fun. So I'm Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. Thank you guys for watching. And let me show you some little tips on painting this colorfully, because a lot of times when you're using a lot of colors like this and you mix them together, what happens? You get brown. So we have to sort of keep our colors a little separate. We're working in acrylics, so we have to work a little quicker, um, unlike oils where we could really be blending a lot. So I'm gonna show you some little tricks that I use to keep the paint um, clean and, and, and bright and not muted and um, you know have that brown tone from mixing too many colors together. So it's just a little tiny canvas board I'm painting on. I'm just gonna use one brush. It's a hog bristle brush. I love these stiff bristle brushes for painting, uh, especially landscapes and things. You can really dig into your canvas. It gets into the little nooks and crannies. It blends well for you. Um, I use them when I'm oil painting. They are really kind of an oil painting brush, but they're great for acrylics too. And I have pulled out some of my heavy body tubed acrylics today, but I also like to use some of my just little craft paints. So use what you have, pull out colors that you like. I'll show you how um, what colors I'm using as we go along. When I do some blending, as you, you might have seen when I paint lots of different things, is I... Um, I use a lot of dry brush blending. So that's why I've got a big stack of paper towels next to me because I like to dry off the color off my brush, then use the nice soft brush just to softly blend some of the colors. So really I'm gonna use this one brush, just keep drying it off with my paper towel. If I need to go into clean white, I may just grab another, but you could certainly just rinse off the brush that you have. And I'm here to answer any questions as, as you, as you um, pop on. So if you'd like to say hello and tell me where you're listening from, and I, and I know I've been taking a little poll on my pages lately and people are loving seascapes. Um, of course, we all love landscapes and animals and florals and still lifes, but lots of people, um, maybe because it's winter, are looking for some, some summer sun. So I am going to show you, I have just got out some colors. I use white, and some yellows in here. I, I, I did pull out my CAD yellow light and medium, but whatever yellow you have, pull that out. I use a little bit of an ultramarine or a, uh, or a phthalo blue. I like to mix that with my phthalo green and that's how I get some of my nice turquoises. I seem to, uh, I've pulled out some turquoises from the bottle here, but I have to say I, I reverted back to using just my um, phthalos and um, mixing it because I get a nicer, cleaner uh, turquoise color. Hey, Rhonda, thank you for watching. Um, I'm glad you're here. I've got some CAD red. I also bought some CAD yellow, uh, CAD red light out because I didn't, I wanted to mix up kind of an orange uh, salmon y color. I've got uh, some purples out. I have a quinacridone, uh, I usually can say it better, uh, pink there, but you could use your reds and make a pink. I was just playing around with colors. I really didn't even think about jumping on um, until I thought, oh, maybe everyone needs a little bit of summertime painting today. So I'm just using this little tiny canvas just to show you it's easier for you to see. I'm not gonna even sketch anything on really. I'm gonna divide my canvas into my, um, you know, my bet, my sky and, and my ocean. You rarely want to divide your canvas right in half. You might want to have more sky showing. You could go lower with your ocean. You want more ocean, you could go higher. I'm going to re recreate this one as best I can. So I'm going to go a little higher with my horizon line. And I'm going to lay on some colors first and they're going to almost dry because I'm going to be kind of thin with them. That gets a base coat on. And then I go back and I add more color more brush strokes, heavy brush strokes with my brush so that you see some texture. If I was painting in oils, I would have time to blend them all and do this all in, in, at, you know, at the same time kind of. But what I like to do now is get a base coat on here. It's gonna dry. I wanna go back with more wet color so that at that point I can blend it because it dries so quickly. So let me just start painting. And as I go along, please um, ask any questions you might have. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of um, my white, I'm just kind of giving an idea where the little sun that's shining through is there. I know it's white on white, so it's a little harder to see. And uh, let me actually, I'm gonna just so that you can see a horizon line, I'm gonna just sketch it in just so you can kind of see it on your end. Then I have a little bit of that sun reflecting down into the water. So I'm just gonna make almost like a little zigzag. Sometimes I'm using my heavy body paint, sometimes I'm using the the thinner paint, you'll see why when I start adding more colors, I just like the uh, 
the texture I get of the heavy body when I dab on some some uh, colors and I like to be able to see the texture of the strokes. But sometimes if I just want to blend and get a color, the, the thinner paint that comes out of my little craft bottles works better. So it's just more of a zigzag there. Then I go and get my yellow on either side. Um, so this is going to go right around. See how I'm putting it on kind of lightly, just with little hash strokes there. It's blending with that white just by me doing that. I'm going to blend it a little more, but I want to quickly first get a little of that same as a cad light yellow. So if you have a darker yellow, just mix it with a little white. And now you can kind of see how I've done that zigzag. You don't want the reflection straight down. You want it to go side to side. The ocean water, that's how the reflection would look. So I've done that pretty quickly. Now is my point where I'm going to dry off that brush because I want to use just a dry brush to blend. I don't want to wash it in my water unless I have to because I really have to make sure at that point I get every little bit of water out. So now I'm going to go and I'm just going to touch where the white is meeting the yellow and little tiny, uh, like I use like little tiny padded strokes or little X's and mix that white out into the yellow. You're going to lose a lot of that white here. That's fine. I'm going to go back in now just with the dry brush, taking my white again, maybe a little bit of the heavy body, and I'm going in and just patting it in. And I don't have to have it blend perfectly. I want to see my brush strokes a little bit. So you're going to see what you like the look of. You're going to say, oh, I don't like the look of those padded on brush strokes. I need to blend them. And you can. But I like to go in sometimes and just leave them a little heavier so I can see the texture of the, the stroke. This is very light. It's light on light. But I put on a little white to start, a little white, added the light yellow, blend it a little bit, and then I've gone on. See how heavy I'm applying those strokes? That just gets me started with those really light colors. Now, we are going to put a little yellow here and there. When I use colors in my painting, I like to spread them out to make it harmonious. I don't use just yellow here and leave it. You can see I've dabbed it in in other places. It just is kind of nice. When you're painting with all these colors, you might say, oh, um, I'm going to dab a little bit over here or there. Feel free, do that. I'm going to just take a little bit of that color now. And just because it's going to give me an idea of where it's going to go. I'm following this a little bit, but it's never going to come out the same. So when you're painting, don't say, oh, no, it's not right. It doesn't look like yours. It's not supposed to. My second one doesn't look like the same one, same of the first one either. So these colors are just brushed on there. I want to brush them on a little softer. So I've got the, the dry brush again. Because I can't really blend all these colors yet, nor do I want to because I don't want to get brown, I'm going to spread them out a little softly on the pal on the painting there too. And I'm going to go from my lighter colors to my darker colors. So I've got my white, went into my yellow. I'm going to go into kind of an orange, a peachy orange now. Um, you might have an orange that you use, that you like, use that. I've got CAD red light here, and I'm going to just mix up a little bit of an orange with my yellows. And I'm just going to go in, and I'm just going to go kind of around what I've got there. I'm using a very light, feathery touch. I don't want those heavy strokes yet. That'll come in a little bit. Right now, I'm wanting to blend it a little if it does. I've got a little bit of paint in my brush, not too much. I'm softly laying it in, and I'm sort of blending it here and there as I go. So you can see I'm feathering it on there. It's blending a little bit as I go. And I've got the white into the yellow. Now I'm getting a little bit of this peach color just to prevent like a harsh line. And so then I've got that in. I want a little orange in the sky. I think I might have lost it a little bit here, but I want a little bit of that in the sky as well. Can you see now that's not going to really blend because the paint is the yellow is dry. So we're just going to put it on really lightly. We're going to make put more yellow on after so that it does blend. But when you've got that color out, like I said, put it in a few places. Put it in a few places. And there we go. I know it looks very rough right now. I'm going to just dry off my brush again. I am going to get into some pinks now. You can make a nice pink with your red paint and some white. I've got this magenta down here. Whatever color you like. I'm mixing it with white because I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to go in again now. And I'm going to lay this. I'm not going to make this go exactly the, the outside of what we just did. But I'm going to lay it in here and there. You can see how I'm bringing it in to that zigzaggy part. This is just a guideline for us to lay in our colors later. We can change them. We probably will paint over them a little differently in some places. But for now, just get some of that into 
to your water and your sky. So I've got some of my pink in there. So you can see I've gotten a little darker each time. Sometimes you can go in with a little darker even yet still. I'm going with the darker pink right against the pink I just put down because they're both wet with the with the brush. You can almost blend some together. So you don't can you see I don't have any harsh, heavy lines here. I'm blending them out. I'm kind of softening them as I go. It's just um I don't want to get too harsh of a line at this point. We'll have a harsh line across the horizon here, but we'll put that on in a little bit. So I've gone in here with a little bit of darker pink right on top of my light just because it will blend for me. And now I'm going to go in and I think I'm ready to get some purples. I'll just go a little darker. So I'm going to try that brush off. And purple is going to really show up. So I'm going to put it on again pretty lightly and look at how I can almost feather it into the other paints a little bit, the other colors. Just softening it a little bit. And remember, this is acrylic paint. We can go over anything we don't like with white. So don't uh, get too fearful and afraid. Just, you know, enjoy it. Throw the colors on and, and enjoy it. And let me know. Uh, say hello to me. I have your comments here. I can answer any questions as I go. I'd love to hear um, what your favorite thing is to paint. And do you love painting oceans uh, as much as I do and seascapes? And I'd love to know where you're watching from. That's always kind of fun. Okay, so I'm filling in a lot of the space. You can see there's some white space still showing. We're going to kind of go back and forth and finesse that. But I want to go into some blue now. So I'll just wipe all this off. And I'm going to get my horizon line in now. So I'm going into my really dark. It's almost like a Prussian blue here or a dark ultramarine, whatever you have, some sort of a dark blue. And I'm going to just stand up because I can't get that straight line with I'm sitting down. I have to really look at it from above. And I'm adding a little water to my paint. It's pretty thick. You can, of course, add water anytime as you go. Just trying to get this as straight as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. There. Okay, so a little dark. I don't want to put it too dark um, in other places. So I'm going to go right now and go into maybe some white or a lighter blue. That's wet. So if I go in with this lighter shade, can you see it blends just almost by itself? I am just butting up a lighter blue against that dark blue, and I'm just softly blending it, and it's blending nicely for me. I'll get some of the little bit of a darker blue into some areas down here. I know it looks a little stripy, but that's what I'm doing. What I have left for blank areas now is where I might go in and fill in. I'm trying to cover all the white of the canvas the best I can. And I'm starting with this dark, but I'm going to go light, lighter on top, and we'll get some of these cool turquoise shades in too. A little blue in the sky is not a bad thing too. So let's um, put a little bit in the sky too. So. I have a little empty space. I, I'm going where I have an empty space, but I'm also going on top of other colors if I feel like uh, that's where I want it. I really covered up some of my yellow here. It's going to turn a little greenish, but we'll just go back over that with some white and, and some more yellow to get more yellow back in that sky there. Kind of staying away from the whole sun here, staying away from a little bit of the um, little reflection we've got going on there. So let me just use that. Doesn't it look very stripy, just throwing the colors on. Um, again, I'm not worrying about blending them too well, but as I go with my dry brush, I do soften them. Let's throw a little turquoise in there, which I, I like I said, I have these turquoises out of the jar, but and they're okay, but this one looks a little gray to me, but when I use my, let's say a dark, an ultramarine, a thalo, a dark blue, I get into like a nice dark green, it makes really a beautiful first of all it makes a beautiful ocean color if you are painting a traditional blue green uh atlantic ocean but you add a little white to that and you're going to get some nice turquoises too and you just go back and forth with either the green or the blue to kind of get the color that you like but i really liked what i came up with here i'm going to put a little on top i'm going to rinse my brush off because it looks a little tainted because of all the colors i had in it i don't I want my turquoise to be a little brighter. There we go. So I'm going to kind of go on top of what I have here a little bit in some places. Sometimes it'll be by itself. I'm tending to, to gravitate towards where the blues are with that color. I'm going to go right over. This is a little good bit of ocean we have here. I'm going to lay in some of that turquoise there too. Ah, I don't know if I went, I get a little turquoise in the sky. I didn't go too much. I don't want it to be too green, and, and that's a little on the green side. So I may 
shy away from putting it. That, that lighter blue is okay, but I don't want to get too turquoise in the sky. I don't want to have a green sky. And this looks a little off to me. So you can always be straightening out anything. You lose your dark, you can always go back in and add a little more if you wanted, if you've lost it. And that is where I had mentioned we're going to kind of let it sit and dry. This dries pretty quick. The sky is pretty dry. And now we're going to kind of go over it. We have our base coat in. Our white is covered. We can work a little quicker. What I do is I go back with the same colors we've sort of used, heavier brush strokes, dabbing it on, and adding some white here and there. It's a pretty quick process, pretty easy process. All right, so I want to go in and get a little more of my yellow built out a little bit there. And I'm just going lightly across there, just dabbing it in, just getting it a little, dabbing it in, working a little quicker. I want to get it back in while I'm down here too. I've got some purple over my yellows in places. I'm just adding a little more. I sometimes lay it down pretty thick strokes, dry off my brush because I want to pop in and get some of that white on there right now while it's still a little wet. And I just see the how I'm just dabbing it now. I'm, I'm not really blending too much. I like it to, to have some texture to it. I'm laying this on pretty thick. I'm almost patting some of that heavy color on and across. And if I think I've gone too far and I have too much white, this is where uh, you can go back and forth as much as you like. I could go and say, oh, it's a little bit too white here. I could drag some yellow through. And again, like I mentioned, I like to go back and forth to things. Now I would go with my yellow maybe and throw in a little bit more here and there. I've lost it here a little bit because of all that blue I dragged in. I could go back and just get it a little brighter in places. And I'm just gonna, where I, do, where I have little spaces or where I just wanna carry some of that color through, I'm repeating the same colors. We're gonna go now from the lighter to the dark. I keep losing the end of my brush here. <laughs> I've been in the water too many times. So now I want a light orange, kind of a peachy. So with my orange, I'm going to mix in some white, and that's going to give me more of a peach salmon color. I'll put some of that in. You can adjust your colors on the fly if you want to. I might want some darker in there too, but I'll put that on my brush. I like that up against the reflections here a little bit. And now I will just dab it again in some other places, just... Pick a few places, put it in again. I did use this in the sky, so let's go back up here. Get some around that uh, little area of the sun. Light, light strokes again, so even if this color under is dry, it does sort of feather out and give you a blended look. And I did want to add a little bit of the darker orange, just a few bits, so I'm gonna just darken up with a little more of my um, red in there, my kid, red light. So you can see the light peachy color, but look at what just dab in. Same tone, same color, just more pigment, more red pigment, just here and there. Sometimes it's a strip, sometimes it's a dab. And it's not really um, any way that you, in particular you have to do it. And I did like to have some of those darker colors in there because now we can lighten them up. So what I do when I have an area that's pretty dark, I'm going to take the same color. Oh, hey, Debbie, I am using a hog bristle brush. It's a bright, so it's not straight, flat across. It's a, a filbert, rather. It's a little rounded. Um, it's a bright because it's a long handled because I find them in the uh, fine art section of the stores. It's a hog bristle brush, so it's stiffer than your sable, I mean, your synthetics or sables. Um, I want a little bit more body to my brush. Uh, this is a Dynasty brand. I buy them in bulk through Dick Blick. But if you go into any of your hobby or art stores and look in the fine art painting section, look just for a white bristle brush. And uh, I think you would like it. You only need a couple sizes, you know, and you can do your big canvases. It digs into the little crevices and the nooks and crannies really nicely and, 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 and does blend your color really well. And now, so what I meant before is when I go to back to my colors I've already used, Sometimes I go in and I lighten them up even. So let me go into, say, my pinks. Can you see I've got some areas of pink that are pretty dark? It's a darker pink. I'm going to go get that color again, but I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to go right over the paint I have. It's just I'm using that as a guide, and I'm using those little strokes. I can sometimes use it heavier. I'm going right over where I already have pink, 
So this is pretty much the same color. It's a little wetter. Now you can just grab some of your white and I'm going to just dab it on. So I want to put in some lighter shades of these dark colors. I just don't want it to look like a big dark streak. So I can go back. And why I'm wetting the color underneath is because, say, we have this dark pink and I don't go over it again. When I go and do my, my white, it's going to look too white. I don't want a big white area like that. I want to go with my pink, kind of match that color. Sometimes go a little lighter or darker. But if I go on that color now with the white, it's not going to look like a like a little vague white line. I can go in and see it's blending with my pink. And I get a darker shade of pink, a lighter, and a little bit of even a lighter shade, but not a stark white. I'm leaving my stark whites for my sun in these little reflections. I'll throw some in later that are going to look like waves. But for now, go color by color. Go back in to where you have laid in pink. If you work quick, you could do it all at once. If you want to, just do it in sections. So I'm just roughly going in with the dark pink again, just re-wetting it almost, drying off my brush, taking a little white, and just going right on top of it so that I can get some light pinks. I'm not going to cover it. I'm just going on top of it here and there so that I have that dark color showing through still and a little bit of the lighter pink. You see, this is the dark original color and then a little bit of white as well. And again, you can just drag this color through here and there if you feel you want it someplace. That's a little dried, so it is a little whiter. But And as I'm going, I'm always looking at the whole painting. So if I say, oh, I'm painting this in, but look at how that pink line just stops so abrupt abruptly, I might want to just feather it out. I might want to just soften some rough edges as I go. I am working mostly across. You can see I'm going back and forth, the ocean water. That's the way the direction it is. And so I've done the pink. I'll be going with some of the purple. I'm going to recreate the same color pretty much that I put in there. I'm sort of just re-wetting it and adding it. If I feel like, oh, I really think I should have purple there, I'll add a little here and there. But I'm both mostly going back over the colors I had. But feel free to add some. And then I dry the brush off and I take my white on the same brush. It's going to look, it's going to get a little light purple, which is fine. I don't want it to be stark white. And I just go over the color that I just laid down and I just add a little bit. You can do any kind of little brush strokes you want. And I just want, want it to not be that harsh little dragged on piece. I want to soften it. So you can see that white softens even into the yellow a little bit that's above it. We don't have a harsh dark line against a light color. And it is starting to already blend in. And I'll do that with the blue next because that's the color that we used. I think I will rinse my brush off, though, because I know last time with my turquoise, I did lose that nice bright color. So now I'm going to go back again with that. I'm even going to re-wet that little dark blue horizon line there. And then if it's not straight, you can always straighten it if you need to. I don't think that's not straight because I'm sort of looking at it from too close. So, and I did like a little bit of dark here and there too. So we'll just throw a little in there. Now I'm going to get the lighter blue that I had. I've got quite a mess on my palette here, but I wanted to drag all my colors out because I wasn't sure, quite sure what I was going to use. This is a little bit lighter blue. I think maybe I'll just go in with some white. Back and forth strokes as, as straight as you can, not trying to measure them or anything, but straight as you can. Um, Looking for my white paint so that you could have, it looks like little waves almost back there. All right. Well, I have the white paint here and it's right in front of me, I'm sure, somewhere. But let's just keep going and I'll work with my heavy body if I need to, too. All right. So some more of that lighter blue that we did earlier. And I'm just going to lay some on here and there. And then we'll do the turquoise afterwards. So let me re-wet some of this. And mostly this technique is because it's acrylic paint and it's drying quickly. If it was oils, like I said, we could put the color on, blend it, have the time to blend it carefully into the color next to it. But I lay on all those colors pretty roughly in the beginning, just as a guide. So when I go back to this point, it's a little easier for me to just take a look and uh, put the color on and then just blend it without having to think about where the color's going. So it's the same sort of thing. I'm using the white now for some of the blue areas. And I will finish up with a little turquoise. 
And if you look, and sometimes you want to step back from your painting a little bit, and you look, and it looks areas that are too harsh and not really blended, just a little bit of this white here and there kind of softens the colors together. Now I'm going to go and get some of that nice turquoise that I made. And a little bit of that could be thrown in here and there. And I'm using pretty, I'm using the heavy body paint so it does lend itself nicely to put some heavy strokes in there. Sometimes I put them on and just want to leave them that way. It's just, I'm just kind of patting the brush on a little bit. And I like the way that looks. I do have to get away from this painting lots of times to just get, step away. It's, it's so hard to, to see when you're this close. So do step away from your painting. I want to get a little turquoise in that water. So I'm just going to like almost lay in some little dabs. If you lose anything, some darks that you might like, remember you can always go back. That's the good thing about the acrylics. You can always go back and lay it right in. If you have a dark area that you didn't like the way it looks, you can let it dry and paint right over in white too, and then fix it. So you're not stuck with you know everything that you see. You can always go back and play with things, fix them. And now I am going to go, and I like to go back to my lighter colors because I don't like the way maybe that orange is on top of there. So I always go back at the end and kind of puff up my little sky, my sun. If that little purple goes in too far, I want to go back. I can, you know, soften that up into the sky. If I've lost something, I've lost my little yellow there. If I lay it in now, I'm not going to have that green problem. I can just lay that in because I do want a little yellow here and there through the sky. Just like I said, I like to use all the colors uh, throughout the painting and it just is a little more harmonious that way. So right now I'm just really looking at things and, and seeing if there's anything I want to add or take away or fix. I'm going to add some nice heavier highlights now too. Let's see that I did not like. I didn't really mean to put that dark spot, but you can either just take some clean water on a brush wipe it right out or you could paint over it it's it's pretty easy to fix all your little boo-boos when you're painting i want to get some white in here now i didn't actually fix that yet but i think i'll do it with the white I'll get some clean water and kind of soften this heavy body paint a little bit and now i'm going to really lay on some thicker heavier strokes so in my sun here if i want to just dab in some heavier white here as well I like the way it looks when there's just like a heavy bit of paint. And that could be in any of the colors. I've lost a little of my yellows here. Let's put a little more in. And now I'm going to take just some of my paints that I see there and, and just kind of pat them on and make it a little heavier. If I see through the to the canvas a little bit here, I can just take my, my purple, for instance, and I want it to be a little flow a little easy easier i could just kind of take the light purple now and just drop it in this is all up to you right now you just step back you might not want to touch a thing you might want to add a few uh, bits of color i know this is really super colorful and uh not totally realistic of course but i do love to paint with color and um i do like to do some seascape so i thought i would combine that And it really could be done, but I'm going to, if you want to watch, I'm just going to finesse a few more things and then we can see what we think. It seemed to me that that was kind of a square shape there. I wanted to go back in. There. A little bit more white because I want to almost give the idea of some waves coming across there. As crazy as it is with all those colors. I still might like to put this, this could be a wave coming through. You could do a little heavier wave here if you wanted with just some white. Up here, I'm going to highlight some of these little ones. What it could be little clouds coming through if you want. 
about it. And then the important thing is to is to know when to quit because sometimes it's hard to step away. I think it's about time to step away. I'm taking a really light, light yellow because on top of this dark, just you pop, pop on a few little bits of light, it's kind of a nice look. Okay, so I think that's good. What do you think? It's hard seeing both of them. So this is the one we just painted. This is a different one I painted a little earlier. Um, similar colors, but they all would be a little different. So that is that. Does anyone have any any questions or anything? Because um, it was just a quick little little um, acrylic painting. If you felt like adding a little color to your day, well, I appreciate you guys watching. And um, oh, another thing, if you want to know when I'm going live to paint, you can text me at this number nine seven eight three one five five six five zero. In the new year, I am going to be better about making sure I let everyone know. But um, and also on my page here, you will find this video. It will stay there. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.